welcome to the Knit and Pause podcast. I feel like I need to scooch a bit. Um, my name, of course, is Raylene and uh, Kamala Knits on Ravelry. You can find show notes for this episode, as always, at knitandpausepodcast.com. You can find episodes. They are linked there. They are on YouTube. And they're on iTunes. This is episode 41. It is July 10th. It is almost 10 o'clock in the evening. So I'm sorry if the lighting's off. It looks fine to me because I've got natural day bulbs in some of my lights. So the light looks fine to me. I tried it with a skein of yarn to see if the colors looked okay and they looked okay. Once I replaced the bulbs and the light up there and I have a, yeah, there's lights everywhere. So it is a little bit later than normal for my recording. I usually try to record in the afternoon to get natural light. Um, but honestly, with my desk where it is, it doesn't seem to matter. The lighting actually might be better right now than it normally is. But I've normally had like the entrance light or those two lights you can see right there and there up. Um, and they all have like soft white, which means everything looks yellow. And I bought some bulbs when my parents were out. I was going to replace all the bulbs in this apartment with um, daylight bulbs. But we bought a pack of four only to realize that every single one of these fixtures, which there's one here, there's one there, there's one over here, and then there's one that way from me at the entrance, they all have three bulbs in them. So I need a lot more than one box of four. I need like another three boxes of four on top of the one I already have. So I've not gotten around to that. Anyway, we are knitting. I am knitting. I hope you are knitting. Um, I had a lot of time to knit in the last week, but I feel like I don't really have, well, I have a fair bit done. It's all stuff you haven't, all well, no, it's not all stuff you haven't seen before, but all of my works in progress are stuff you haven't seen before. One of my finished objects you haven't seen, the other one you have. So we'll start with the one that you've seen, because that's boring, and we'll get that out of the way. I finished my flounce socks out of Into the World Gloucester Sock. Just vanilla, fish lips kiss heel, plain, stripey socks. As you can tell, I had, this is the second sock here, and this is the first sock here. I feel like I had gauge issues on this one. You can see where here the stripes are wider and over here, because my gauge was looser. Um, and then I kept tightening it up, and you can even see that it, gets a little bit wider here and then it goes back narrower. I don't know why I was struggling. I was struggling hard. I don't know why, but I finished them. So they will go into the sock drawer for winter. I love my hand knit socks. I love wearing hand knit socks. It's awesome. It's like my favorite thing. It was only plus eight Celsius one morning this week. Totally wore socks that day. Knit socks. It was like plus 25 by the time I, uh, left work. It was a little toasty, but uh, I still wore them. Uh, so yeah, I, I really like knitting socks. It's fun. And uh, the next finished object, I finished another sweater for my niece. This is flax, so you can see it has the garter ridge down the sleeves. It's a raglan. This is the one to two year size. It's about the same size as the um, rainbow one that I knit last week, or that I, yeah, that I knit last episode. I didn't knit it last week. This I knit last week. Um, this is out of Elsbeth Lavold Silky Wool XL in colorway 11, aka purple. Um, it was knit on US 7s and 6s and 7s. So this ribbing here was done on sixes and then it was sevens the whole way and I didn't switch back to sixes at the bottom. But I did on the sleeves, I think. I don't even remember. So, hopefully she will wear that. Of course the back looks the same as the front. I really like, I really like the tweediness of this wool. Um, it's not a super wash, but it is 50, I believe it's 50% um, wool and 50% silk. 
I don't know if it will felt or not. Um, oh, 80% will, 20% silk, it'll probably felt. I will have to give washing instructions. My mom can wash it. I guess that's not the greatest for a baby thing, but I had four skeins of this and I used 2.7 for the one to two year size. I was expecting to use more. The one to two year size in the pattern, they say you need 460 yards and I, or 360 yards, something like that. I only used 280, but my gauge is right and it's the right size, so I don't know. It's very cute. I have now three garments to go to my niece when I see them in August, which will be awesome. Those are my finished shelter. Worked up really quickly. It only took me like three or four days again, which is good. Sorry, I'm like super thirsty. It was almost plus 40 Celsius today here. Hit 38, 39. Um, it's a freaking sauna. And I was running around. I got a haircut, which is why I'm trying to record today. Because I got a haircut. It'll never look this good again until my next haircut. <laughs> I can't do anything with hair. So, um, yeah, that's why. Whatever. So, next is works in progress. Um, I still have not touched my banana leaf shawl. I don't even know if I'm going to mention it anymore or keep it in the show notes or... Uh, I'm not loving it. I'm tired of knitting it. So, we'll start off with a sock. I cast on a sock. It's a self-striping sock. I'm kind of up, kind of upset with this yarn, and I will talk about that. So, I started a plain vanilla sock. This is self-striping. This is um, Rain City Knits. It is her Superwash Merino Nylon. It was a custom dyed self-striping colorway for my Winnipeg, my local yarn store in Winnipeg, Woolsley Wool. These are their shop colors. So it's got this neon green, uh, a really bright blue, hot pink, and purple. And I, I love the stripe sequence. Now their, their sock yarn is got a light fingering. It's similar to, hmm, I don't even know. It's not, it's a light fingering like um, Inspiration Dye Works Merino Nylon Sock or um, uh, Leading Men Fiber Arts, but it's, it's definitely, like it's got a little halo to it. It's not a single ply. It is a very tightly twisted something ply. I don't know what ply it is. But you can see, I don't know if you can or not, but it's fuzzy, almost like um, Zauberball single ply. That's kind of what the halo reminds me of. I'm not used to seeing that in a merino. It is a merino. Yeah, it's superwash merino nylon fingering. Um, so my problem with this is she doesn't do a lot of self-striping, which is fine. And this skein is probably about three years old, two or three, which is also fine. It's been marinating. Um, my issue is that you can see here, this is the transition from the purple to the green. So there's some almost undyed spots. And you can see it here again when I transitioned to the blue to the purple, that's a lot more noticeable, which bothers me. Another issue that I have is that, as you can see in the green, there's a lot of pink over dye that's happened, these pink splotches. And um, so the green isn't as clear as it could be. And I have a feeling there's gonna be a lot of bleeding when I wash it. Um, the other problem, which I have never had with any other yarn before, no matter what color it is and everything, is that when I knit, um, it turns my fingers pink. Um, the only color that doesn't seem to bleed onto my hands is the blue. But the purple, I get a, a pink line because I tension my yarn like this. So I get a pink line along my index finger over here. I get a pink line all the way around my pinky. And then because of how I hold it, like I tension that way, and then I'm picking up and knitting here, 
So all of these fingers turn pink, this finger turns pink, and on my right hand, some of my fingers turn pink because I hold it like this. Um, and that's just bleeding off from the dye job. I'm, this isn't the first time I've knit with Rain City Knits. Um, I did a shawl uh, last year for them out of this same sock base, I think. It might be a different base. I don't remember it being so fuzzy, for starters. Um, but yeah, those are kind of, and even you can see here when it transitions from the pink into the blue, it's purple for quite a stretch. And that goes around like for a couple stitches. It's probably a 10 stitch transition there. Um, the pink to the pur like the, the purple there doesn't bother me so much. It's these white stitches right there that I find, or even these like pink stitches before going into green. Like I just feel, I got this far and my hands were neon pink <laughs> and it washes off. That's not a problem, um, but it annoys me because then I wiped, I like rested my hands on my, one of my blankets, um, and that transferred to my blanket and then if they bleed and this green turns even more mucky because it's got so much bloody pink in it everywhere like you can see it. it's all over the place it look doesn't look as clear or as nice as it does in the skein just looking at it it's fine but if you look closer you might not be able to see it but when I look at the actual skein I can see some of the the pink showing up so I'm a little bit upset with that. And maybe I shouldn't be. But I am. And like I said, this skein is a couple years old. It's been marinating for quite a while in my stash. Um, I My mom actually picked it up for me when they were selling it. It was a limited edition. I like the stripe sequence. I love this blue. I adore this blue. It's not quite so dark. It's a lot brighter. Um, it's just like a really nice bright blue and I like that the purple and the pink stripes are a little bit shorter. I find it adds some interest to have these longer, like it's not just your typical six row self striping all, I mean I love that, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying it's different, which I like, but you know, you know, I'm just going to have to suck it up and get my fingers dyed pink for a couple days to finish off both skeins and then the rest can sit in my used leftovers bin, whatever. So that's that. It was a lot of talking for vanilla socks. Um, next I have, I'm actually knitting something else. I have more Rain City Knits. I got store credit um, when I knit a sample for her, for her shop, which was awesome. So I got store credit. Um, so I got two skeins of, this is her tag, she's out of Vancouver, and there's her website. You can find her on Etsy as well, she actually sells out of Etsy. So I have two skeins of 25% uh, Tussle Silk, 75% Superwash Merino, DK weight, 246 y yard gram. 246 yards to 100 grams. It is in the aqua colorway, which is a little bit more green in real life. It looks really blue there. It's a sea wash kind of green. Um, it doesn't look super shiny despite having 25% silk content. I think it's because of the type of silk used. I believe Tessa silk is a raw silk, not as processed, so it's not as shiny. Um, there is, it's, it's, it's a tonal, so you can see there's some lighter spots, which I love tonals. I'm really enjoying this. There's no bleeding. It's, I got this last year, so it's not as old. Um, I am knitting the French Can-Can, 
by Mademoiselle C out of it. Um, and I know Laura from the Knit Girls knit this recently. I've been wanting to knit it longer than that. Um, I first saw this pattern on Tannis Fiber Arts, her blog. She knit it out of her orange label merino cashmere silk worsted weight base or something. Um, that's when I fell in love with it. But I am done the body. It's just a lovely garter stitch body. And then it has an applied knit on edging. I just started this this evening. And it's got this lattice work with a nice uh, French braid. And then these uh, double yarn overs and pico edgings. So for every repeat you're doing, which is two cable crosses worth, eight rows, you're getting rid of four stitches off the main needle. So you basically knit the body until you have about 40% of your yarn left and then you work on your border. I really like it, it's a crescent shape. It'll be very pretty. Loving the crescent shapes because those are the shawls that I actually wear and use when it gets cold enough to. I mean, I'm not about to wear it in plus 40 Celsius, but you know, I think I'd melt even faster. I'm already melting, so might as well melt faster, right? Um, the next thing I'm working on, I cast on the Low Tide um, by Tim Ken Knits in Madeline Tosh, Tosh Lace in the Morning Dove colorway. So it's this really pretty bluey gray. I'm holding it double. I wouldn't have to, but I am. So I'm finished the right front. There, that's more color accurate. But you can't see the pattern for shit, hey? Ah, oh, there you can kind of see it. Ah, oh, there you go. Well, I guess it goes like right front. I'm holding it upside down to show it. <laughs> not that it matters when it's not connected to anything. So it's this bias piece and it goes like this. And then there's another bias piece that goes the other way. And then there's two of them for the backs. And then it has a little cap sleeve. And I'm making this into a t-shirt, not a little vesty cardigan-y thingy. So I still did buttonholes. You can't see them very well. They're kind of blending into the garter stitch there. So I did buttonholes. Um, and I'm going to be ma basically making it a Henley. So I'm still going to put buttons there, but they're probably always going to be buttoned. I guess I wouldn't have even had to do holes, and I could have just sewn it together with the buttons. <laughs> but that's okay. We didn't think about that. We did buttonholes instead. I don't like doing buttonholes. My buttonholes always look sloppy. This isn't blocked yet or anything. So I have that done, and I'm half done the left front. This is about two nights of work. Not very long nights of work either. So I'm enjoying it. It's interesting to knit this yarn double. I really like Tosh Lace. Um, at this gauge, I am getting gauge for the pattern. I showed my swatch a couple weeks ago. It feels really dense, even though it's not. Um, and that's, it's really, even the stockinette, it feels like I can squish it. You know what I mean? Um, I could have probably gotten away with doing this because it is a, a little cap sleeve tee kind of thing. I probably could have gotten away with holding the yarn single and, and doing gauge. It would have been a lot lighter and airier. Um, but I do have three skeins of this and I want to use it all. <laughs> so yeah, we'll just do it this way. And also this helps prevent pooling because I don't see any there's no pooling so far because I'm holding two strands double and often when one strand is light the other strand is dark so it's the colors aren't matching up very well and I don't know how much this would have pooled anyway because it's not really variegated it's more uh, a blue gray tonal almost like there's some parts that are are a darker gray and some parts that are a, a light blue and Like here, you can see one strand is gray, the other strand is blue. And it's very rare that those two sections match up simply because of how it's dyed. Which is awesome. It's really nice to work with. I'm really enjoying, well, kind of enjoying that. I've obviously been enjoying the French Can-Can a lot more because that's gotten a lot more work, but garter stitch is easy. 
love garter stitch. Um, that is all I'm working on. So that's a good bit of progress on a couple things. Um, hopefully the French can can, or in my project notes, it's the French can can't, because I can. I can can't. Can. <laughs> so next is purchases. I have two things that I received. Um, I'm sorry, I did not mean to do that. I feel like my thing is kind of crooked, and I'm sorry if I'm crooked. Maybe I'll just sit like this. No. Okay. Um, I got two items in the mail. Um, one I talked about last. I think I've mentioned them both before. So I pre-ordered. One was a pre-order. I pre-ordered um, Max and Bodie's wardrobe by Tin Can Knits when it first came out. All the patterns have been released on Ravelry. They were released one a week um, for uh, six weeks or eight weeks or whatever. Uh, when I received all the patterns for this book, digitally, I was disappointed that I bought it. And if I had seen all the patterns before buying it, I probably wouldn't have bought the paper copy especially. But I probably would not have bought the digital copy either. Simply because I, I don't think I'm going to knit anything out of it. Like it's cute and they're cute babies. The babies are cute, but I don't really do color work, so that Fair Isle vesty thing is kind of meh. The hats are cute, but it looks like just a simple slip stitch beanie. Like, that's okay, that's cool, but. And then, you know, the knit pants. I'm not gonna knit pants for my niece, I'm sorry. I mean, the babies are adorable for babies, but, uh,. The blanket's nice, and I really like Tannis uh, Lavalief and Tannis Fiber Arts. She did a really nice copy, a really nice version of the blanket from here for her uh, second child. Um, and the play date here is a cardigan that goes all the way up to adult sizes, which is, I mean, it's a really nice, simple <coughs> fingering weight cardigan. You could very easily knit it in gray or black, and it could be a complete wardrobe staple. That is... It's a really nice pattern. Like, I'm. That might be probably the only one that I will knit out of here. Um, but. I just don't have babies. And maybe that's my problem. I was hoping, like they said, three, three. Okay, the, when they were advertising it originally, they said three, si three patterns. This is bothering me. Would have sizing um, for adults and children, which is, is great. Um, that's kind of why I bought it, because I don't, like I said, I don't knit a lot for babies. Um, but the three patterns that are sized from adults, from kids to adults, is that Playdate cardigan, um, the hat, and socks. And I think they're worsted weight socks, which I don't knit. I like my fingering weight socks. Um... Yeah, worsted or Aaron. I mean, they're they're cute socks, but I don't. Yeah, a little disappointed in that, but whatever. Wouldn't have bought it. Now we know. Don't just buy anything because you know the people are nice. I have some other other stuff, and I like their stuff for the most part. Um, but it's maybe that one's maybe not my cup of tea. Um, next thing, um, I purchased some Vesper sock yarn with nylon. My label came off because the tape, like it wasn't taped very far up, so it's let go. Whatever. Um, this is in the Oasis colorway. It's self-striping, so it stripes the, let's see if I can pull out a strand of each of the colors. There's no gray in there. Okay, so we have those four. It's a five striper. Hmm, there's actually no white. That's... Hmm. So, this was a pre-order. Those are the colors that it stripes. Six striper. So blue, green, 
green, yellow, pink, gray, and white. I really like this base, just in the hank. I really like it. It's, you can see, it's at least, I think it's a three-ply. It does not say on the label. Um, I had never bought Vesper before simply because it didn't have nylon and I didn't trust it. Now I've knit Madeline Tosh Tosh sock into socks twice now. Um, but now it has nylon, so I bought a skein. I really like this. I might buy more of their stuff someday, you know, when I have money. And have knit down my sock yarn stash like you wouldn't believe. Someday. So I think this will be a really nice um, stripey pair of socks. Vanilla socks, of course. That's kind of what I'm buying for these days, because pattern socks are for people who have a longer attention span than I do. And more brain power because there's very little of that around here. I almost bought some sock yarn from the UK, some self-striping. It's a very nice colorway. And uh, it was 16 pounds for one of the skeins and 17 pounds for the other. And then after adding shipping and then calculating the, the exchange, it was almost 80, uh, I think it was like $75 for two skeins of yarn. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not into paying almost $40 for one skein of self-striping. As difficult and as time-intensive as I know self-striping is, um, I'm not willing to pay that much for it. I was on Etsy the other day. I can't remember the seller, but I was looking at one of her self-striping. There's, um, And it was like a 10 or 11 stripe, and some of them vary their price based on how many stripes there are. And, and others don't. Um, I think I paid $35 total for this skein, including shipping from the States and exchange. Um, that's fine. Query, I paid $60 for the one skein I have, but it's a skein and a half. It's like over 500 yards. It's like 550 or almost 600 yards. So I can get probably two or three pairs of socks out of that. That then makes a difference. But this was for a 100 gram skein of self-striping and they wanted almost 50 bucks plus shipping. It was like 49 something Canadian because Etsy does the exchange now um, automatically. So it was over $40 US for one 400 gram or 400 yard skein of self-striping and that uh, made me very sad. I know it's time intensive, but it doesn't seem worth the cost for that. Like I'm fairly frugal, but I have no problem spending $35 on one skein of yarn because I do value Indie Dyer's, um, Indie Dyer's time. Um, and I mean, obviously I tend to buy a lot of, I feel like I tend to buy a lot of Indie Dyer's. I don't know if Madeline Tosh is really considered an indie dyer anymore. I guess she is. I mean, she's a big one. Um, and then Blue Moon and uh, Three Irish Girls, I guess they would all be considered indie dyers still, even though they're big and you can find them in a lot of retail stores. Um, but I buy that stuff almost exclusively, so I don't have a problem paying 20 or $25 for a, a single skein of yarn. But to pay almost double that for a single skein of yarn, that's when I don't see the, the benefit, I guess. And that's my choice, and you might feel differently, and that's okay. I mean, obviously people are buying it. If she's on Etsy and she's selling it, then people are buying it, and some people with bigger budgets maybe don't mind as much that they're paying, you know, $50 plus, including sh plus shipping um, for a single skein of yarn. I just can't justify it. If I could, I probably would, but I can't, so I don't. That's that. So, one nice thing about the UK dyer self striping that I wanted to, that I just thought about, um, I might end up buying from her eventually. Her self striping, her colorways were really nice. They were stuff I hadn't seen before. Um, 
and all of her main basic sock base and what everything was in is an 80-20 BFL nylon. So that could, that will drive up the price a little bit. Um, and, but that I will probably buy from her yet, which is not right now. So I have a, a book review when I wrote up my show notes. I was reading this, but I finished it this morning. Um, I am kind of working through CBC's 100 Best Canadian Books. I think you can find it on cbc.com slash books, potentially. Um, I don't quite remember the URL. Um, a couple of my classes last in the last two years since I started taking English have, have had some Canadian authors, especially uh, Indigenous authors. That's what our Native Americans are called now, Indigenous peoples, which is fine. Um, this is not written by an Indigenous person, but it is on the list. So when I went to the library to renew my library card, because I did not realize that needed to be renewed, and then went to borrow a book online, because I've been borrowing mostly ebooks from them, I was told, your library card has expired. So um, this is Annabelle by Kathleen Winter. It is obviously a library copy. It's It was published, I believe, in 2012, maybe 2010. I should look before I talk, 2010. Um, the setting for it is East Coast Canada, a province called uh, Labrador. Well, Newfoundland. Labrador is a section of Newfoundland or Newfoundland. We're brilliant with our province names. Um, and it is the story of, um, a family and let's see here. I'll read, I'll read the cover, the blurb. I don't even know what it's called anymore. In 1968, in the beautiful spare environment of remote coastal Labrador, a mysterious child is born, a baby who appears to be neither fully boy nor girl, but both at once. Only three people are privy to the secret, the baby's parents, Jacinta and Treadway, and a trusted neighbor, Thomasina. Together, the adults make a different, difficult decision to raise the child as a boy named Wayne. But as Wayne grows to adulthood within the hyper-masculine cult hunting culture of his father, his shadow self, a girl he thinks of as Annabelle, is never entirely extinguished and indeed is secretly nurtured by the women in his life. It was a very good book. I don't know if I'm ready to talk about it yet, but it was a very good book. I would highly, highly recommend this if um, gender issues... Um, you don't even have to be interested in Canadian authors specifically. Um, I am reading this because it was on a list of the top 100 books, Canadian books. Um, I live nowhere near Labrador. I live almost on the other side of the continent from Labrador. I have never been there. Um, it shares a lot of elements of some of the indigenous authors that I've read. Um, it's very beautifully written. Um, I really enjoyed it. I'm not going to tell you anything about the story because I think the blurb is enough. That's kind of what piqued my interest and made this kind of the first book that I chose off of um, the list uh, was the excerpt. No, it's not really an excerpt. I can't. Uh, what is that called? Jeez. Um... So yeah, and I've been watching a lot of RuPaul's Drag Race, so that was, I know it has nothing to do with it. They're not hermaphrodites, and that's fine. They just want to dress as women. They don't want to be women. It's a job, right? They're, they're entertaining. They're in a costume, basically, and that's fine. I think it's hilarious. I, well, I don't think, they're, they're comedians. A lot of them are. Um, I'm explaining this really badly um, because a lot of them, a lot of drag queens do not want to be girls just to get that out there. They don't want to be girls, but it's fun to dress up like one sometimes. And if you can make really good money doing it, why not? Right? Like they do more work. They wear more makeup in one night than I think I've worn in my entire life. 
and they have better hair than I do, and that's okay. <laughs> Not jealous at all. Anyway, if I wanted to wear a wig, or if I wanted to have awesome hair like them, I would wear a wig and I would wear false eyelashes, and then it would be different, but that's a lot of work. <laughs> I'm not that committed to the cause, basically. Anyway, so it, it's really interesting and I really, really enjoyed it. I would, I would suggest it for anybody, if that at all interests you. Um, check out your library. I believe Amazon has it. You can probably download it on Amazon or Chapters. Um, I need to return this to the library, obviously. I saw a copy of it. I went to Chapters today and browsed around for probably about an hour. Um, I almost bought a copy, but I don't think I'm going to read it again. Um, so I didn't bother. Excuse me. I have a lot of books that I've bought that I've read and haven't read again. And then I have other books that I've bought and I've read over and over and over and over and over again. Um, I haven't picked up the next book that I'm going to read. I'm not sure what it's going to be. Excuse me. I have another book from the library that is on that list, so maybe it'll be that one. Maybe it won't. We'll see. Um, that is it. That was not bad. For an episode length, I don't think. I will go and keep watching some of my podcasts that I enjoy watching. I have an episode of Stuck in It Zombies to watch, and I just finished watching Knit One Heart 2. And uh, I will get this going for upload, and I will, let's see, two weeks from now, 24th? Yep, I'll be recording the 24th. Awesome, I'm missing the long weekend again. I'm going to see my parents in three weeks. That'd be great. All right, so I will talk to you guys later. Um, enjoy what you're knitting. I hope you're having an awesome summer. I hope it's not as hot as it is here, because nobody should have this. Uh, and I will talk to you later. Bye.